Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Daisy Wright from Ontario. Hi Daisy, how are you doing? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you Good. for being here. So Daisy, she is she has more than 15 years of experience. She has been collaborating with executives, mid-level professionals, and emerging leaders to help them find satisfying careers. People seek her insight and services because they enjoy working with someone who is genuine, authentic, and reliable. Her coaching process is a collaborative one that incites awareness, inspires change, and enable clients to gain clarity and confidence and in identifying their values and finding satisfying careers. And she is a three-time winner of Outstanding Canadian Career Leader Award, winner of the Outstanding Interview Strategies, and she's also recognized by the Constant College with a 2011 Alumni of Distinction Award and a nomination for 2021 Premier's Award. She's also received a Top 100 Black Woman to Watch Award from Canadian International Black Woman of excellence. So uh, Daisy, as a career coach yourself, and you've done so much experiences and seen a lot, but still, we are in 2023, there's a lot of challenges for new newcomers, job seekers, you don't have quote unquote, Canadian experience. Mm-hmm. But you have re- but you have published a book almost 10 years ago, which is still relevant You don't need to have Canadian experience. So can you tell us about more, what is this Canadian experience that a lot of times employers are using to discriminate or using it as an excuse to tell them, I don't like working with you or what's the the analogy behind that? Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for having me on on your show. That's one. And two, to go directly to the question about not having Canadian experience. So I'll give you, I look at it from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. The first one is that the employer doesn't know you. Okay. They don't know what value you could bring. You are new to the country, yes. And you you have come with your, all your qualification and all your skills, Mm -hmm. but they don't know you. Okay. So it's, it's like somebody asking you, to marry them on the first date. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one part of it. And I think that's the main part. The second part is, as you rightly say, sometimes it's discrimination. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's out there, you know, plain, plainly. However, I do I tell people, don't buy into that because there are people who are gonna love you, and then there are people who are not gonna love you. There are yeah. people who are not gonna like you. So you get that out of the way. Focus mm-hmm. on having a conversation yeah. with the employer to yeah. say, here is who I am. In fact, based on my qualification, my education, and my background, that's how I was able to qualify to come to Canada. Yeah. So you, so I encourage people to have conversations like that, to stand firm and say, if I did not meet the criteria, yeah. Canada would not have selected me to come to Canada. So, so together, let's collaborate and mm-hmm. let's see how what value I can bring to your organization. Mm-hmm. Help me to understand your needs yeah. and-, and how I can fill those needs. Mm-hmm. So well, it's easy. It's easy to get to get to feel rejected and feel yeah. down when some when you're when you're faced with no Canadian experience. And I'm saying, don't you don't have to just bounce back up and be brave, be confident in who you are mm-hmm. and what you can bring to the organization. So do you think that first when a new immigrant comes to Canada? They need to identify their values. And as you express, you can they can tell that in the cover letter that what can they bring to the value. Do you think that it's also a good idea to have survival jobs before getting directly to their jobs? Or it all depends. And can they also reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn, which we're going to talk about also, but just an 
just a follow up from that conversation. Right. Okay. So a number you have, you have asked about three questions in that one. Yeah. Um, first of all, yes, they should they should not wait until they get to Canada mm -hmm. to know their value. Yeah. They should start thinking, looking back on the jobs they have had. Mm -hmm. And and saying, how well did I do that job? Yeah. Because the employer gives you a job description to say, do this. But you want to, and, and everybody gets that job description, but yeah. you have to personalize it and mm -hmm. say, how did I make money, help the company to make money yeah. or to save money? What program or what, what did I develop? What system did I develop that allowed me to stand out from everybody else? So you can start doing that long before you come to Canada yeah. because it makes it better. When you come here, you remember, you already know yeah. what your achievements, what your accomplishments mm -hmm. have been. So don't wait until you come to Canada to do that. So that's one. And the other question was about survival jobs. Yes. Yeah. And I'm in two minds with this. First of all, I say to people, come look for a job in your field because again, you are qualified to come here. Mm -hmm. So look for a job in your field. However, everybody's situation is different. Yeah. I might have I might not have come with a lot of money, which is true. We never came here with a lot of money. Um, so people might not come if you if you are here, if you have come and you have a lot of money that can you can survive over, you know, six months, eight months, then spend the time to focus on finding the job you're looking for. Yes. But the reality is a lot of people come. They don't have the money. They have sold everything to come. Yeah. And wouldn't it be better if you take a job that's paying you something? Yeah. Because that something will help you to pay your rent, to mm -hmm. buy groceries, to take care of your family in the interim. Yes. Right? So you can do that. But don't live in that space. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. forget your goal. Your goal yeah. is to get to a job yes. that you were doing or close enough to what you're doing back home or even above. Yeah. Don't don't so don't live in this survival job and don't say, oh, my God, poor me. I'm in this survival job. Yeah. No, because that survival job can teach you things. Correct. You will get a chance to learn a little bit about the Canadian culture. Yes. How people behave in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. those are things that you can take with you. Yes. And I I like to to um sometimes I give people tell people the story of my husband who is he's a he's um he's an electrical technician from 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 back home he worked with the the electricity company there yeah and when he came mm -hmm. when he left us in new york because I, I won't go into my full story in terms yeah. of leaving jamaica then to new york and all of that but when he left us in new york he said dear if i didn't if i don't get a job in two weeks in my field, I'm going to take anything. Yeah. And I said to him, no, you're going to get a job. Remember they told us at the consulate that there are so many jobs there for you and I that, you know, we're even joking that, you know, we are going to have one foot in one job and another foot in the other <laughs> job. Right? Yeah. But two weeks later, he, he phoned and he said, I got a job. I didn't get a job in my field, but I got a job. Yeah. I got a job in a factory. And I said, what? He mm. said a factory. So after the shock wore off, I said, well, you have gone ahead to prepare for us. I had a young baby, I had a seven month old at the time and a, and a four, four and a half. And I said, you have gone ahead to prepare for us. So that's what we need. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And, you know, we came up and, you know, and things like that. But he dev he never took his eyes off where he was going. Yeah, he did everything with that survival job. He paid the rent and everything, and then when I came up, I got a job. Well, my job wasn't a survival one, but that's not the point. Yeah. Um, and he continued to do everything he needed to do yeah. until one year later, 
he got a job doing exactly what he was doing mm -hmm. in Jamaica. And you know what? He's still at the same place. He's at Electro Utilities, which is the, it used to be Brampton Hydro. It's now Electro Utilities, doing exactly what he was doing back in Jamaica. The point of my story is never give up. Yeah. You will be rejected. You will feel you'll become downcast. You will meet people who will tell you, oh, when I came, I had to go through that. So you have to go through that as well. Yeah. But don't take your eyes off the prize yeah. and surround yourself with positive people, yes. people who are going to encourage and support you and yeah. say one day you will make it. You will make it. Yeah. That's my, that has been my, 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 my um, message, message. Yeah. to people, to, to, to newcomers. Yeah. You will make it. Yeah. I had right. similar, yeah, I have similar uh, experience. When I came and I with my MBA degree and everything, and I got rejected, and I said, okay, I need a survival job. So I did almost three months in a uh, in a retail store, and then I did one year maternity leave. But they all gave me transferable skill. They gave me references, and but again, after when I was doing those jobs, when I when I was coming back home, I was doing networking. I was searching for the job in my field. So yes. again, but again, everyone's story is different. Uh, so uh, so for the audience watching for the first time, I'm going to ask Daisy a couple of questions, and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Kind of a journey with us. You can like and share all the videos. So tune in next time for another great question with Daisy.